We're asked to consider the initial value problem shown here, and notice how the given differential equation is a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, meaning the differential equation fits this form here, and we now know we can solve this type of differential equation using the characteristic equation shown here, where the solutions of this quadratic equation give us the information needed to form the general solution to the differential equation. So for a quick review, if the characteristic equation has two distinct real roots or solutions, the general solution is in this form. If it has two real equal roots, the general solution is in this form. If it has two complex roots in the form alpha plus or minus beta, the general solution is in this form. So let's first find the general solution, and then we'll work on determining the value of alpha that satisfies this condition. So notice how looking at the given differential equation, A is equal to one, B is equal to negative one, and C is equal to negative 20. So the characteristic equation would be one R squared minus one R minus 20 equals zero. We can solve this by factoring. We'll have two binomial factors. The factors of R squared are R and R. The factors of negative 20 that add to negative one are negative five and positive four. So notice how we have two distinct real solutions or, or roots. We have R sub one equals five, R sub two equals negative four. Which means the general solution is Y of T equals C sub one times E raised to the power of five T plus C sub two times E raised to the power of negative four T. And our initial conditions are Y of zero equals alpha and Y prime of zero equals one. So in order to use this initial condition, we'll have to find Y prime of T. Let's go ahead and find that now. So Y prime of T is equal to the derivative of Y of T with respect to T. So we'd have C sub one times E to the five T times five, or five C sub one E to the five T, and then plus C sub two times E to the negative four T times negative four, or minus four times C sub two E to the negative four T. Now let's continue like we normally would if we were solving an initial value problem. So if y of zero equals alpha, we'd substitute zero for t in y of t and alpha for y of t. So if we substitute zero for t, we'd have e to the zero here and e to the zero here. e to the zero equals one, so that would give us the equation c sub one plus c sub two equals alpha. And if y prime of zero must equal one, using the derivative function, we'd have e to the zero here and here. So we'd have the equation five times c sub one minus four times c sub two equals positive one. Now remember our goal is to have the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t equals zero. Where y of t is this function here, Let's write this as c sub one times e raised to the power of five t. And let's write the second term as plus c sub two over e raised to the power of four t. The reason I wrote this as a fraction is because notice how for any constant c sub two, as t approaches infinity, this term here is going to approach zero. So really our question is, what would c sub one have to be in order for the limit as t approaches infinity of this term to be equal to zero. Well, if we take a look at the graph of y equals e raised to the power of five t and y equals e raised to the power of negative four t, we can quickly see the limit as t approaches infinity of this function approaches zero, but the limit as t approaches infinity of this function obviously does not approach zero. It approaches positive infinity, and therefore the only way that the limit as t approaches infinity of this term is going to approach zero is if c sub one equals zero. So this is the main idea of this question. We have to recognize that in order for this limit to equal zero, this term must approach zero, and that's only going to happen, and that's only going to happen if c sub one equals zero. So if c sub one equals zero, notice how this equation just becomes negative four times c sub two equals positive one, 
and therefore C sub two equals negative one fourth. And now going back up to this equation here, if we know C sub one equals zero, and C sub two equals negative one fourth, we now know that alpha must equal negative one fourth in order for the solution to this initial value problem to approach zero as T approaches infinity. So the answer to this question is alpha equals negative one fourth. It doesn't ask, let's also give the particular solution. It would be Y of T equals, again we'll substitute zero for C sub one and negative one fourth for C sub two. So if C sub one equals zero, this term is going to be zero. And if C sub two is equal to negative one fourth, we would just have Y of T equals negative one fourth E raised to the power of negative four T. Again, it doesn't ask for the particular solution, but this is what it would be. I hope you found this helpful.